Well, if we can, and I believe those four parcels, those are the four parcels that we're talking about this morning. Yes. And we have them identified as HCK 14, 15, 16, or 56 and 57. Do you refer to them in any other manner? I know sometimes landowners will refer to it as the East 40 or the Front 80 or whatever it may be. We refer to it as the Hempel Farm that we had bought. Okay. And as we visit this morning about that farm, um, if you can just maybe reference south, north, middle, the middle parcels, I don't know. However we can identify it for the record, that will be helpful. Um, can you please describe the current use of your property and any plans you may have for different use in the future? The farm is a corn and a soybean farm. My uh, two sons uh, currently farm it. Uh, I had put uh, grain bins up there, a shed up there, and I had planned on building a new home down there uh, in the far parcel uh, where the pipeline's gone through, the one to the south. Okay, so if you could just for the sake of reference, there you go, you got your pointer right in here, is where you were thinking of doing a home. Yes. On the very far south parcel. Yes. And then you talked a little bit about some grain bins that you had added there up in this area. There's a shed up here and two grain bins that I had put up there. I bought the farm in, I think, 2008. Okay, and just for the record, that would be the furthest north parcel, correct? Correct. And is there a home on that parcel by chance? No, it was a, a, a home was there years ago. But currently it is up. There's a well up there, uh, and there's a septic system up there. Okay. How about a general description of your property? Um, is there any of the following on your property? And there's a variety of things here that we've talked about. Buildings, other structures, which you somewhat mentioned here. Drainage tile, underground uh, installations, water lines, natural gas lines, telecommunication, electric. Um, we'll start with those because there's quite a list. We'll just start with those two things. Currently up by the grain bin, there is uh, electrical up into this area. Uh, we have uh, the pasture here all fenced off. We run uh, a few cattle on that just to uh, keep the grass down there, so... And then in terms of any utility infrastructure, do you have any existing easements on this property? Not that I'm aware of. <coughs> um, any above ground facilities? Overhead lines, utility lines? No, we buried the line, uh, the electrical lines coming into the uh, farm site there. So, okay. Um, streams or bodies of water or other noteworthy training features? Uh, it's prevalent uh, stream there that uh, seldom uh, runs out of water. It hasn't run out of water since I've done it. That's why we run cattle on there too. They uh, drink out of the stream there. So, And, and again, we'd be referencing the north parcel, correct? Correct. Uh, it runs the whole length of the right down in this oh. area. So, so from the north into the middle parcel. Correct. And there's natural uh, fence down in that pasture on uh, down in this area here. Very few places in Iowa have those. But uh, we have several in there. The NRCS came out uh, three or four years ago and identified them. They got natural, uh, it's a natural uh, wetland that has natural vegetation there that's never been plowed or anything like that. You walk into that, it almost sucks you into the ground. So so you're describing it's somewhat of a bog, marsh type of area, correct? Correct, but it's sweet water in there, so. But it's, it's kind of interesting, a cow will never walk into that ground. That's the reason you called it a natural fence? Fence. Yeah, fence. Gotcha. I think the cold is also in my ears a little bit too. My apologies. My apology. Um, any timber or forests? There's a, a cedar trees uh, located along that. Uh, we keep the majority uh, cleared out, but 
there's probably four or five acres of cedars that are 30 to 40 feet tall. And which parcels would those be located? That would be in that uh, far parcel, way on the bottom, so right in there. Further south. Yeah. Okay. And any other features or conditions that might not be readily apparent and could affect or be affected by the proposed project? This ground is very uh, high productive uh, soil. Uh, two years ago, I grew 290 bushels average corn off of there, but it's a fragile soil. There's about two feet of uh, topsoil. Then you go below that topsoil, and uh, there's quite a few rocks and uh, stuff in that. So it'd be difficult, if you put a pipeline in there, it'd be difficult to bring that ground back to the uh, where it was before, even if you take that topsoil off. And do you know what is <clears throat> what is this, excuse me, what is the size of the proposed pipeline through your property? Do not know the size. I'm surprised at the fact that they're going through four parcels of it. They told me three. And Mr. Davis, have you have you had the easement presented to you? The agreement? Yes. And did you have what I would call a sit-down conversation with the company over that easement. Multiple, uh, they brought a construction uh, person in there. Originally, I said I had no interest in this. I asked them to do a, a different route. I didn't want them going through that ground uh, because I know it'll never be the same again. And uh, then they uh, came to me and uh, said, well, if you don't agree to this, uh, we'll use eminent domain on this, and you're going to get uh, just a small portion of what we've offered you. Very, very unprofessional. And I said, uh, the question I had to them was, how do you know you're going to get eminent domain? And they said, that, that that's a natural, we'll get it. Did you make any sort of counterproposal? They talked about money to me, uh, then they were going through uh, two parcels. Then they said three, and now I see it's four. We talked a little bit about money after they uh, said it was uh, going to be uh, used for eminent domain. And afterwards, I sat down and thought about it and talked to my two sons. I said, I don't want this thing going through here. This is a hazard. We're on that farm every day. We check those cattle. I don't want a pipeline going through uh, my farm. Now, if that was a natural gas pipeline to heat people's homes, I'd have no problem with it. But this is not in the public's uh, best interest. So describe any, I, mean, I think you've, you've somewhat done this, but any further specific concerns you may have or any recommendations you have for the board um, to address your concerns. Well, I think a little bit of its age. As a young man, I thought, uh, I own a piece of ground. I can do anything I want with that ground. The older I've got, I realize that I'm a caretaker of that ground. That ground is the good Lord, and it's meant here for generations to come. And you treat that ground that way. And that's how we uh, farm. And the pipeline going through there is not treating that ground the way it should be treated. Do you have any recommended or alternative routes for the proposed line? And if you do, could you please share that? And what are the advantages or disadvantages of that alternative route? Well, I uh, questioned if they could uh, go to the east over here and uh, stay off of this ground. And uh, they did not want to uh, put uh, bins in there just for one piece of ground and uh, that type of thing. And then they were talking about a shutoff that were just across the road from me. And my point is, if I build a home in there, I surely don't want to shut off across the road from me, and I don't want a pipeline going through there. You wouldn't want to go in through your house, next to your house if you're there every day. Did you share with the company the information about potentially building a home in yes. that location? Yes, and they said there was no uh, problem with uh, danger or anything like that. And since then, I've researched that. That's not the case. 
that pipeline ruptures where uh, that whole uh, community of uh, Quimby is in trouble. And how many cow calf herd do you run? It depends. Uh, now we probably run uh, uh, 20, 20 pairs on there. My uh, youngest son wants to uh, get more into cattle. We were up at one time up to 200, but uh, we farm a fair amount of ground that we own. And uh, we've uh, cut back on the cow herd, but now he's uh, expanding that cow herd. All right, thank you, and I think for now that's all I have for questions. I believe, Mr. Taylor, we're going to go ahead and go to you right now. Um, it was kind of a trend last week. We started with you, so I think we'll continue that process. Um, and, and, Mr. Taylor, I just we'll get you started, and I just want to see how the audio works, but I think we're going to be in pretty good shape. If not, I'll let you know. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't need to go first, so don't, it, it's no honor. Um, uh, Mr. Davis, I'm Wally Taylor. I represent the Sierra Club. And um, it looks like there are actually two waterways on your properties, one in the northwest parcel and then one in both of the east parcels. Is that correct? That is correct. Um what do you think would be the impact on those waterways if the pipeline goes through? That one on the north side, uh, I have a shallow well in there. Uh, it's a natural sweet well that uh, some neighbors come and actually uh, take water out of there. Uh, it comes from a slough across the road a little bit. Uh, there's a, The filtering system, I think, makes that water taste so well. Uh, it's going to be tough. The The south uh, ravine that it goes through is pretty deep. Uh, we leave that always grassed in so there's no erosion. The north one is not quite as uh, deep, but that's where the cattle run up there. Well, the south one you say is very deep. You know how deep it is? I thought about putting a farm pond to the far end of that. Uh, I think there's areas that it's probably 30 or 40 feet deep. So how would the pipeline go beneath that? No, uh, they didn't uh, share that information with me. And then down at the bottom of that south easternmost parcel, there's a, uh, a lot of that is shaded dark green. Uh, uh, do you know why that's shaded dark green? Is it a lot of uh, trees or what? Yeah, right there is the cedar trees I was talking about. I'm talking about the red area to the right of where, yeah. That is uh, pasture ground there. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, is that where you pasture your cattle? No, we do not go on that end of it. Uh, there's some tents down there, so... Uh, we cut hay off of there, and that's why I had planned up going up on the hillside and building a new home. Okay, and how far would that, would that new home be from the pipeline? Not more than 100 yards. And how firm are you on your plans to build that new house there, irrespective uh, of the pipeline? My wife's going to retire in two years. Uh, we had it already picked out in the home that we were going to build on there. Uh, I was 99% sure I was going to build a house there before this pipeline. And you had mentioned a uh, natural wetland, I think perhaps in that lower uh, westernmost parcel, is that where it was? That is correct. All along, <clears throat> excuse me. All along that uh, pasture there, there's three or four fence right into this area here. Um, uh, the reason okay. I did it, I was going to tile that ground uh, and run into that uh, wetland, and then I had the NRCS come out from Sioux City, from Woodbury County, and they said uh, 
not to do that. That's natural. Uh, the vegetation is in there is from thousands of years ago. And uh, she said that would be a shame to destroy something like that. So I did not do that. Is that in the CRP or any kind of program like that? That is in the actual pasture. Uh, like I said, the cattle will not go into that ground. I don't know why. But if you sit there there's, and smell that in the spring, there's a different odor to that whole ground. It's kind of a real sweet odor. Cattle will not go into them fence. Do you know whether there's any connectivity from that wet land underground to the area of where the pipeline would be? I think the pipeline's going to be to the north of it, uh, the way I understood it. But actually, it's going through all four parcels here, and I didn't realize it was going through four. I thought it was going through three. And even two to begin with, right? Yes. Um, if the pipeline goes through, what impact do you think there would be on the, the productivity of your land and the the soil, that land will never be the same where uh, they put that pipeline because it is a fragile soil there. There's two feet of topsoil, and then below that, there's rocks and stuff, so it would be very, very tough to peel the topsoil off and uh, put it back and uh, get productivity there. We know till that farm, we do not bring any tillage equipment on it just because of that reason. Okay. Uh, the fact that you no-till, does that uh, present any special impacts uh, if, they, if the pipeline is uh, put in there? They would have to make sure that no rocks and stuff are on the top of that uh, ground. How, uh, in the case of a pipeline rupture, how close would the nearest emergency personnel be? Quimby is a small community. I think that's maybe 100 uh, people down there. They have a fire department down there. But it sets in the low ground. What concerns me is there's a rupture. I'm up on the hill there, and that just flows down to the community. But where is Quimby uh, direction-wise from your land? Quimby's about a mile to a mile and a half south of me. Okay. I think you um, made a passing mention of a drainage tile. Do you have drainage tile there? Not that I'm aware of on that farm. Okay. Thank you. I think that's all the questions I have. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. And I believe we'll use the name tent propped up again, like we did last week to identify. Um, Ms. Grunhagen, I believe you have some questions. I do, thank you. Hi. Uh, my name is Chris Grunhagen, and I represent the Iowa Farm Bureau. And I just have a few more questions for you, if um, that's okay with you. Yep, that's good. On the parcels here, do you row crop all the areas that are like tan colored? Uh, correct. Okay. And so the dark green would be uh, grass areas. You know, it's difficult when you look at a map there. Uh, those are. Uh, This area is the bins. This is farmed here. This stuff is all farmed here. Uh, so all of the red is farmed. And I know you talked about how you graze your cattle. Do you just graze it on corn stalks then? They're actually in the pasture, the uh, animals. And then uh, after we take corn off, uh, every other year we'll uh, run the stocks. And so is the pasture located on these parcels? Correct. Okay. Can you identify exactly where that's at? Or where you... This is pasture right here. 
So it's the it's the green area on most parcels, right? Which correspond kind of uh, with the waterways. Correct. Okay. Thank you. And are those waterways then fenced off? They some of them are, some of them aren't. Uh, when you go up into this area here, there's a fence that comes across here. The top side is not fenced off. And down below, that's all fenced off. We don't let cattle come into that down below area. And so if the pipeline were constructed, would that cut your cattle off from some of the pasture ground that you're currently using? We cut them off from the water right up here. Uh, we have a well that sets up by this building, and we have a water tank here. Uh, normally, this creek will always uh, run water. This year it's getting pretty shallow because of the drought. So you're having to water your cattle up by the building, the northern parcel building site then currently? We do, but if they come through right here, they'll cut this, so we'll have to run something down the end of this area. And so is, is that something that you would want um, Summit to pay for? to make sure that your cattle had water then during that construction. If there's a pipeline on this farm, I don't think I'll own this farm. Uh, I don't want to have my uh, sons on top of that every day. Uh, I don't want to be checking cattle on there. So probably right now, if they want the farm, they can do a good uh, solution. They can buy that farm. Rastetter owns enough ground and it's investors. They can buy that farm, put their uh, pipeline through, I own uh, 10 or 15 other farms. I'll just buy another farm and stay away from it. Do you participate in federal farm programs on these parcels? Repeat the question. Uh, do you participate in federal farm programs on any of these parcels? We do. Uh, on the soil compliance, uh, uh, we have federal crop uh, on those uh, pieces. Uh, it's a highly productive farm because we've fertilized it really well because we own it. Uh, I do uh, what needs to be done on there because, like I said, we're a caretaker of the ground. I do not want to do something where that soil is going to erode. So you're doing no-till in order to maintain conservation compliance for the farm programs? We are, but we were no-till way before that. Uh, First, we were minimum till we would hit it once with a disc, not on this piece, but on some stuff we have in Woodbury County, and we went strictly to no-till on uh, everything. So would you also be concerned about um, the lack of residue then that's caused by the pipeline construction? I would. And do you have any uh, soil or water conservation structures on the property? I know you have the you have the buffers around the uh, water sources there. Do you Correct. Have There's some uh, farm over, farm farmable terraces on there where you farm right over them. Uh, they're kind of depressions in the ground. Uh, there's that was put on there way before I owned it, and uh, so we farm over those. So the kind of little darker colored wavy lines in the brown areas would be farmable terraces? Yes. They're tough to see on that map because you farm over them. But you can see those there. That is correct right there. Yeah, they're, pre they're pretty visible. Yeah. And so would you expect those terraces to be restored? I would expect that to go back the exact way it was. That's all the questions I have. Thank you. And I apologize, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know that you were with us last week in that seat, 
And if you would like to identify yourself and let us know who you are and who you're representing, and then we'll get that in the record, and then we'll let you ask questions. Okay. I am Lisa Stuck. I am, my husband and I are landowners in Wright County, and I am here as a landowner. Um, I don't know if you mentioned this, but how long have you owned this farm? Since 2008. Okay. <laughs> and um, did you ask the land agents why they were so sure that eminent domain would be taken if you didn't sign a voluntary easement? I did ask that. It was not answered. I called uh, my uh, state representatives in Dickinson County and asked them, and they said it's a foregone conclusion. Eminent domain will be used on this. They said, just follow the money. Uh, Rastetter, uh, they told me, uh, contributed a lot of money to the governor. She will not act on this until after the pipeline's through. And uh, like he said, it's, uh, it's the money. And we have 70% uh, of the Iowans do not want him at the domain used on this, is what he they told me. I talked to two. I called three legislators. I talked to two of them on the phone. And they said 70-some percent of the island do not want intimate domain to use for this pipeline. But it really doesn't matter. They said follow the money. The proposed hazardous pipeline goes diagonal on your farm. And as a farmer, you and I know how row cropping uh, going over a rough terrace is. Can you tell us how rough that's going to be? to farm across that diagonal line? My sons absolutely do not want this to go through because of that reason. We're gonna have to put different, uh, when you're looking at parcels, here we farm this, if they're crossing this, how do we get to this? Uh, and the same thing here, we can get to this real easy, but it's very difficult to get to this. And the same thing on the bottom there. It is not one with the pasture going through there like that. That's what attracted us to this farm, uh, just the looks of it. Uh, but it's more difficult to farm because you're in more parcels. Did you ever think in your lifetime you would have to deal with a for-profit private company come in and try to steal your land that you have future plans on and dreams have been dreamt and now everything is on hold well this land was taken from my ancestors before i've got native american blood in me so this does not surprise me this is about money this is not about anything else okay thank you mr williams thank you a couple of follow-up questions in that northeast parcel is, do I understand it correctly? Does the white line representing the pipeline in that top parcel, north or excuse me, northwest, uh, does that actually run through the waterway that's there? Yes, that's actually uh, it's a waterway, but there's actual water in that waterway too. That's uh, running crook in there. Okay, so so the darker shaded area that makes up that particular parcel is that all waterway, or is it just a portion of the waterway? What is it? This is uh, all pasture ground right in here. And there's a waterway that runs up from the buildings. And we have a well right up here. And uh, that well comes from across the road over here. Uh, there's uh, cattails up in that area right there where you put the pointer is cattails. Okay. Thank and we you. do not farm that. So. All right, thank you. So do you have any concerns about, I think you had mentioned that <clears throat> The water, obviously the waterway would be softer ground. Do you have any concerns about the pipeline by going through it would weaken the structures of the waterway such that it might cause adjacent flooding outside the waterway? What's amazing about this is when you get a four or five inch rain, this whole area will strictly be covered. Uh, it's probably 100 to 150 uh, yards wide in there. Uh, 
I wondered when we first put cattle in there, but the cattle know enough to go up on the hill. But the water, uh, the creek, probably expands at least 100 times what it is. Let me rephrase it a different way. It, by putting a pipeline in there, will they have to, dis cro by crossing through the waterway, will they have to disrupt the boundaries of the waterway? Does that question make sense? You know, it's a waterway, but it is a pasture, too, so... Uh, I would be, I'd say no. Okay. Do you have any concerns about flooding at all in that area uh, as a result of the pipeline being constructed in this northwest parcel? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, you you indicated safety, and you talked about the, the closest fire department. Do you know if the fire department in Quin, Quinby, Iowa, is preparing for the possible eventuality of a, of a pipeline being constructed in this area? No, there's been very little bit on uh, media about this, and I'm guessing a small fire department like that is not prepared for this. Okay. When you were having discussions with the pipeline company when they were presenting the easement agreement to you, did they make any representations to you about what the diameter of that pipeline would be as it crossed through your property? They might have at the time. I don't remember the diameter of it. Okay. Do you have any understanding of how big it could be as we sit here? I'm guessing it's going to be smaller in there, that area, but when they hook all of these together, that pipeline's got to be pretty good uh, diameter. If I told you that it could be potentially up to 24 inches in di diameter, would, would that surprise you? No. Okay. Uh, do you have any indication, I believe the answer was no, uh, to a more general question about the risks of CO2 leakage on your property, but do you have you actually seen any dispersion models or anything suggesting to you that... Uh, what the effect of a rupture would be over your property? I have. Uh, I've uh, read different uh, stuff about it. I, they've had an accident, I think, down south, and uh, the pressure that they're running that stuff in that pipeline is uh, the kill zone in that area is going to be uh, substantial. Even for your property? Yes. All right. Um, you also mentioned... Uh, your interest, if this pipeline goes through in selling this property, uh, I think you made reference to an industrial, potentially selling it to an industrial developer. Did I did I hear you correctly? Uh, not well. What I said, if they want to buy the farm, they're going to put this pipeline through, and if they can use own eminent domain, I bought two farms in the last three years. They pay me to go and right on the farm. I'll buy something else. Okay. I do not want to be in there. I do not want my sons to be in there all the time. All right, I'll ask you. Carbon pipeline. Okay, thank you. I'll ask the question a different way. Uh, do, with your efforts to sell, do you think that will be an uphill battle with uh, a pipeline being in place on your property? Yes, unless the investors buy it themselves. All right. And uh, what? Okay. And so, um, when you mean investors, are you are you what are you referring to exactly? The investors in Summit Carbon Pipeline. Oh, so if they buy your property. Yeah. Okay. Did you have any discussions with them about buying your property? I have not. Okay. I um, didn't think this was going through. So. Okay. And so just referring to just a, a regular third party that comes up off the street to buy your property, do you think it will be uh, difficult and may have a, a, a negative economic effect on your ability to get a price that you would seek for this property, given uh, the positive qualities that you stated during your testimony here? I think it depends on the person. Uh, if they're like me, they will not want a, a pipeline going through there. They will not uh, bid on something like that. If it's somebody that's uh, just looking about getting money, it's probably an advantage to them. Well, let's talk about getting money. In terms of the easement that you are, uh, that was proposed to you, do you feel that as you sit here, given all the terms that were contained in that easement agreement that there can be any price or any remedy uh, for this board that they could provide you to uh, ease your concerns about an easement across this property? It isn't about money to me uh, at all. Uh, I talked about money with them when they told me eminent domain was going through there. Uh, they uh, brought their offer up, I think it was over four times what they initially said to come through there, but the for me, this is not about money. Thank you. No further questions. Any other parties? Mr. Davis, just for clarifications, 
Who are the legislators you talk to? You know, I don't remember their name, and the reason I don't remember because I um, down on the farm in Woodbury in Cherokee County all the time. We have a home in uh, Milford in Dickinson County because uh, my wife's library director in Spirit Lake. I found out who the three or four were, and I uh, left them all messages, and uh, two of them returned my calls. One was a state uh, legislator, very, very uh, good individual. I don't remember the names. I don't remember the names. I have no other questions. Board Member Marks, no questions. All right. Um, I guess that is it, Mr. Davis. You can step down from the stand, and I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very much, Chip. Yeah.